The next talk is DevEnv is switching to Twix. Let's welcome Dolman. Hey everyone, hope everyone's got coffee after lunch. Um, this NixCon is a little bit sentimental for, for me because I think the first NixCon was 2015 in Berlin, organized by Rock Garbus, and we were like in a completely... So we got no slides. No uh, slides? check the video? I'm sorry. <laughs> it should be slides. Ah, there, uh, there we go. Um, and yeah, it was like, I think we were like 50 people and, and we were in like a this. We had to like move or move stuff from the room to make it empty with Garbus to even make the conference. So it's great to be back. Long story short. Um, yeah, so I want to talk about a little bit like where we're going with DevEnv. Um, I've written on the DevEnv blog post um, a bit about history, how we got here. So I'm going to skip some parts of that because um, I think it's more interesting to see where we're going. Um, so, so let's start a bit. So, like, um, one of the one of the things that I was thinking about: why, why is Nix not mainstream? Why is not everyone using Nix? Um, and this this is the question I've been asking myself for for many years. And um, when I was in Thailand, I, I was listening to audiobook "Crossing the Chasm." It's a very typical book, actually, for startups. But it, it talks really about technology adoption and how it goes through this like cycle of adoption and then new technology comes in and so on. Um, and in the beginning, there's like technology enthusiasts and visionaries which kind of like are super excited about the thing. And then at some point, technology either dies or, or never goes through that thing when it becomes like mainstream and, and, and used. Um, and this is called the chasm like kind of phase. Um, so I was, I was thinking a lot, like, why is that happening? That, why is that not happening to Nix and what we need to do? Um, and so if you look at Nix going mainstream, there's like these this, like, two things that are happening. One is the positive feedback and the negative feedback. And I think in Nix we have plenty of positive feedback. Like, whoever tries Nix, they're super excited. They tell everyone, right? We have all the memes about, like, uh, Nick spreading, uh, the word spreading in toilets and, and whatnot. Um, so I think that we don't have a problem with that part. Um, I think the problem is with the negative feedback, and that's important feedback, right? That's the feedback where we get, okay, this doesn't work, right? Nick's doesn't work, I hate Nick's, I don't know, whatever. Basil is better, I don't know, whatever. Um, so like when I wrote the blog post, um, someone from Canva said, um, Oleg, who I said, okay, Typically, the face is like this. Somebody's super excited about Nix, and they bring it to a company. Canva is a huge company, right? Huge, huge, huge. Um, so there's one person who does the effort, brings it in, and then after some time, there's like backslash from other people who are like, oh, Nix is, sucks. I don't want to work with this. Um, and, and it's difficult, and, and, and it goes in my way, and, and things like that. Um, and you know, so Nix initially introduced by someone enthusiastic, and then fa faced with steep adoption curve, it's abandoned. Um, and he said, both through, I brought the whole Canva on top of Nix back on the day. And Canva is like, I don't know what, where exactly they're headed, but it seems like they're not going to head it the, the Nix way. So like, this is really important feedback. And um, uh, in, in my company, when somebody stops using it, we would always ask, why did you like, stop using Nix? And this was very consistent. Right, so we have to figure out what is going on there. Like, why is this happening? Like, why, why are people like, not liking Nix? Um, because this is like, those people are the ones who then go around and say, well, we tried Nix, but it didn't work out. Um, so that's really bad. Um, so this is how they see us, right? This is like, this is Nix from the outside. Like, they're like, okay, you guys like pain. That's like not good. Um, we're not going to do that. Um, so like, you know, joking aside, this is something to be addressed. Um, so like, I like to see this as like, we need to fix the developer experience. We want people to love Nix as much as we do. And they shouldn't walk on eggshells <laughs> in order to use Nix. Um, and, and, and you know, everybody talks about developer experience and, and it's like this vague abstract term. What the hell does it mean, right? Um, so like I like to think as developer experience as like all the things that you need to think that you shouldn't want to think, right? Like um, like ah, uh, you know, like 
where every time I need to make a decision about something, maybe I don't need to make that decision as a user, right? Um, and, and there are different aspects of cognitive overhead that happen in technology. Um, but I, I think removing all those things from the user's plate is really important to love Nix, right? Like, I don't know. I don't want to... Why do I need to package something in Nix, right? It's not... Th I, I didn't want to package something in Nix. I wanted to run something, right? I wanted to run some software, right? Um, and we are excited to package things in Nix, but people are not. And, and it's totally fine. Um, so maybe they shouldn't, right? Um, so there is a great quote by a French poet, perfection is achieved not when there's so nothing more to add, but when there's nothing left to take away. And I think this is like notoriously problematic in technology that we keep on adding things, um, but then sometimes you need to remove things because there's too much stuff. Um, and this goes together with the developer experience. Maybe there's some things that you need to remove in order to remove that cognitive overhead. Um, well, actually, that quote can be simplified to perfection is achieved when there is nothing left to take away. And if we go a bit further, we can say perfection is achieved when nothing is left to take away. Or as we like to say, you ain't gonna need it, right? Um, I think that's like, I think programmers, we typically obsess with the dry principle, you know, don't want to repeat itself. I wish we switched more into this, right? Like, do we need this? No. <laughs> um, so this is like kind of the mindset I have when I'm trying to tackle this developer experience in Nix. Um, so, all right, that was a very long intro. <laughs> um, so developer environments, like we, we've been working on Devon now for two years. Um, I don't know if you can see this, I hope, in the land, okay. Um, so it's, it's like, okay, what do we need to remove, right? We need to remove all this cognitive overhead of, of dealing with systems and, and, and importing stuff and whatnot. And, and NixOS as a module system turned out to be a great interface. Um, so why not use that for developer environments as well, right? That was kind of like the key insight. Um, so like this is, would be like a very typical uh, definition where you say, okay, I have some packages, I'm using Rust language, I wanna use this channel, I wanna pass some flags, I wanna specify some targets. Um, I have some processes that I want to run as developer. Um, I have some services, maybe I depend on Postgres, run Postgres for me, please. And even testing, like we have like a test command that will like run the processes for you, create the environment, everything, and then you can like wait for a port to be open, for example. Um, this is like, this is like really as simple as it gets, right? Ah, that's, that's as simple as we managed to get it. Like, I don't know what else to remove from here. Um, and, and that makes me very happy. Um, so the way I see it is Nix is like the JavaScript of DevOps, right? Um, I don't think anyone is extremely excited how good the Nix language is or bad. Like, so that's why I, I'm like, okay, this is like we're kind of in that sphere, right? And we, we might develop like TypeScript at some point, right? We have Nickel, for example. So like there is a lot of parallel things that are happening. And we want Nix to kind of be the toolkit for DevOps, right? So the, I see a lot of similarities between the two. Um, so anyway, we, we developed like a bunch of stuff, tasks and services and, and whatnot, and Git hooks and everything. But um, this is not a talk about DevEnv itself, and there's a workshop at three if you want to try DevEnv and use it on your project. Um, this is more talk about like, why are we switching to Nix, right? So again, long introduction. Um, so what are we happy about? We're happy about a command line interface. We spent quite some time to make that like nice and simple. Um, and we're happy with the Nix interface, which is the module system, which allows us to like add options, remove options, deprecate options, um, and extend options. Anyone can add their own set of options to DevEnv, let's say they're not to be upstream to DevEnv itself, but you can have it for your own project or whatever. Um, so that makes it super nice. And, and thanks to the module system and NixOS, this is all like there, right? And, and people know how to use it, which is great. Um, but then, now that we're happy with this, there's like a ton of bugs we need to fix in Nix, um, and a ton of problems that we have. And, and, and Devon uses Nix as a command line interface underneath to invoke Nix. That's just because when we started Devon in 2022, 
that was actually the best option um, to use Nix um, through the command line interface. There was no SDK or anything. That had to be developed. Um, so command line interface is highly, highly restrictive and very basic. Um, so we had to maintain a couple of Nix patches in order to, uh, to bend DevEnv to be what it is today. I mean, that's also not great, right? We would like those patches to be upstream, but they cannot go upstream because they're too opinionated and too, they go too far away from what Nix upstream is, right? So ideally, we would have these interfaces for Nix that everyone can implement something on top of Nix and, and decide what is their interface and how they want Nix to be. Um, so that like we're not fighting in this one monorepo and like, ah, it should be like this. No, it should be like that. Um, so, so now that we, we are at this phase where we want to like look at that, it's like, okay, um, sorry, um, before we go there, um, we want to explore the options and there, I see two options. Either we go very deep into developing SDK for Nix or we go to Twix, which, ha which uh, has seen like three years of development. Um, so I was researching that and let's, let's, I want to show an example of, of, you know, how our thought process went and why we arrived where we are t right now. Um, so one of the problems with, with developer environments is like they should be really fast. Um, and um, we develop like a caching for Nix. Um, and at the top, you can see if I'm using the cache for the eval, like Devon runs in 0 0.1 seconds, about 100 milliseconds. Um, and activates the shell for you. And without a cache, it's 5.5 seconds, right? So like, this is completely basic DevEnv. Like, nothing is happening in there. This is just all boilerplate stuff. So five seconds to set up developer environment is, I, I think it's too much, right? Um, the good news is, like, we have, we implemented this cache and it works really well. Um, so we're happy with that. The problem is, how we had to implement this cache was tough and, and not nice. So there is no SDK for this. So what you can do is you can tell Nix, okay, give me the log format in internal JSON and you get these like wobbly JSON lines. Um, and in there, there are messages where it says evaluating file and it gives you the file and reading directory and so on. So what we're doing is we're parsing all the logs from Nix and we're like collecting uh, whatever Nix is trying to import to do the evaluation. And this is like what we need to track in order to be able to cache it, right? So we, pass the we parse the logs and then we store, okay, if you, if you invoked Nix with this common line, then, then these are the paths that also were the inputs. And then if all, none of these changes, then we can just cache the thing and return whatever the result was. In other case, we have to invalidate the cache. Um, and then we compare the timestamps, and then we use Blake tree hashing in case timestamps don't match. So this is just like an optimization. And we can do this like in a couple of milliseconds. Like, so that's why we can get to 100 milliseconds. Um, there are parts of, of, we still need to use Nix develop, and once we, and that actually evaluates bash, because why not? Um, so once we remove that part, it's gonna go sub 50 milliseconds for sure. Um, so, um, this is kind of like how it works, um, and if you look at the implementation, we have made it a library. Uh, this is about 1,350 lines of Rust code that like, parses the thing, stores it in SQLite, does all the logic. Um, so that's not nice. I mean, that's like a lot of a lot of stuff we shouldn't be doing. Um, so. And there's no guarantee, like if somebody co contributes a patch to Nix, now this logging changes and it's gonna break that. It's like really sad. Um, so, um, again, should we use Nix, SFI or, uh, uh, Nix CFFI or Twix um, to improve that? And there is no SDK support for this, so like we would have to implement that SDK support. Um, so now I'm gonna try to explain why how this would look in Twix and why we think that like Twix solves this in a fundamental way. Um, so if we say we're gonna switch to uh, Twix, that's a rewrite, right? Um, and rewrites are scary and dangerous, they, they, they not often work. Um, 
But the key, I think, to rewrites, to successful rewrites, is, is to, to do it in a modular way. So we're gonna, we're gonna start with the evaluator, and we're gonna like, integrate Tweaks evaluator, and then go step by step um, into Tweaks. So Tweaks was started in 2021. Flockley, Florian had a talk, um, and you can watch like the general overview on, on YouTube probably later if you haven't seen the talk. Um, and Vincent, who I think th they were the first ones to really go deep into this, but there were many other people um, involved into Tweaks effort. And I, I really like this picture because it captures that that energy and moment um, when when Tweaks started in 2021. And there's a blog post we are rewriting Nix um, that kind of talks about a bit more about what Tweaks wanted to do and and the, the similar goals. Um, to, to what Twix was trying to, why the rewrite is needed in the first place, right? Because that's expensive. Um, so currently, the Twix evaluator looks very like this. Um, we have some Nix code. We compile it to bytecode, and then we execute that bytecode into you know, whatever result, which is derivations, usually. That's what we're interested in. Um, and the, the idea behind this is that like this, this extra step of generating bytecode um, can be useful to, to cache it somewhere. Um, and that should, in theory, speed up um, the evaluation. So um, we don't know yet. The, the, the core idea is that like, if we can create optimizations at that level, that a bytecode interface can run faster, then um, running the bytecode should be faster than just what the C++ Nix does, is just straight from Nix to, to running the thing. Um, so this extra step, a lot of compilers and interpreters always have different steps. So this introduces this one intermediate um, interpretation. Um, so we don't know if this is going to work or not. This is like, um, as far as I talk to Tweaks people, they don't know. Um, but it's an idea, and I'm confident whatever solution we end up, the goal is to make the evaluation faster. Um, so. To go back to my previous, um, what we had to do to implement caching, like Tweaks has this idea that it exposes in Rust traits, but you can think of this as interfaces, where you can implement your own implementation of a certain interface. Um, so for example, for, for the case of caching, there's an evil IO interface, which has all the IO operations that are happening during this, during when a validator runs, so we can hook into this and just essentially store this in some kind of SQLite or whatever, um, and that is our caching then. So that's like really simplifies the implementation. Um, so this this concept of like um, let's split the whole Nix into a lot of interfaces and then we can swap and experiment. Um, is, I think, really powerful. And that's going to enable a lot of innovation. Um, so if somebody else writes a better evaluator and implements the same interfaces, we can just swap it, and, and there you go. right? Um, and that creates, I think, very healthy competition. Um, so, so Devon has this title, Fast Declarative Reproducible Composable Developer Environments in X, but they're not really fast. Um, and we want them to be fast. Um, that's that's really important for the feedback loop. Uh, one of the one of the things I didn't talk about in developer experience is like really fast feedback loops. I think it's really important. Um, and developer environments are the core of software development. So like we shouldn't compromise on that. Um, so like the idea is currently um, that okay, if we look at the frequency of operation, like. Devonf, which is like the, the, the top thing, is rarely changed. But if you do, ch so that means like if you don't change anything Nix related, then environment should be like instantaneous. Just get it from the cache, and this is your environment. Um, but if it does change, it's like just one file that changed, right? Like the rest didn't change. So like why are we reevaluating the whole thing from scratch? Um, and this is where we hope the bytecode cache is going to take care of saving us all that work. Um, but then if you run dev and update and update like dependencies, then the whole thing changes and then you're starting from scratch. But how often does that happen? Like almost never, right? Like you, you run this like a part of like a pull request or something. So this is like 
not something, even like that's gonna be a CI who's gonna run this, so not even developers are gonna like get this, they download the thing, they have to, to, to update the bytecode, and that happens now and then, and then you're done with that. Um, so if we like look at the statistical kind of like distribution of this, um, we want to solve the f the first point, and that's what we did. Like so, we right now we have this cache. Check if any of the files needed for deselection changed. Okay, that runs in 100 milliseconds. We can get lower. Um, but then if if we hit the second point, like if it does change, then if you evaluate Devon's of Nix, it's around 600 Nix files. Like this is all a lot of Nix packages import, right? All the packages that it needs and a bunch of Devon modules. So like it has to go through all of that, right? Um, again, if we can catch that and it gets like lower than five seconds, that would be great. I would personally like to see that to go below one second, but that's just like more of a developer experience goal rather than is it technically achievable. Um, if we don't manage to do that, then we're going to need to add garbage collection to Nix and have some kind of a daemon that is going to like cache the whole thing and then evaluate the reevaluate the top thing but keep the rest of the results and it all becomes really messy. So I really hope we find a solution to this that doesn't require this daemon state to run all the time. Um, but worst case, we're going to have to go um, down there. So again, it's an experiment. Um, so I don't know, I, I hoped I, I gave you one example of how these interfaces and tweaks make implementing these things much, much easier um, and save a lot of developer time and a lot of bugs as well, right? Uh, parsing logs is, is difficult um, as in keeping compatibility layer in place until something comes up and changes it. So then the question is like, okay, are you already using tweaks? Um, and the answer is no. Um, I, I spend quite a lot of time looking into tweaks and, and what needs to be done um, in order to get there. Um, so I want to go through like general roadmap of how do we get there to use tweaks evaluation component in DevEnv. Um, so built-in fetch tree, this is like the core idea in Flakes. And I think that this is like the part of Flakes that is difficult to implement. There's a lot of problems with it. But it's, it's something that we just have to keep because these URLs are now everywhere and, and, and we need to keep compatibility with fetching things the way, the same, in the same format. Um, so like implementing built-ins fetch tree um, is going to be tough, but that's something that I've been looking at and, and I think we can do it. Um, the challenge in built-ins fetch tree is that like what Nix currently does, there's a lot of problems. So we can either do the same thing and kind of inherit all of those problems, or we can do the correct thing, but then we break the hash that this generates. Um, so what does Fetchery does? You give it a URL, uh, GitHub, tarballs, whatever from the internet, and it puts it into a Nix store. Um, and this is like the layer, if you're familiar with functional languages, this is like the impure layer of languages because this is done outside of Nix build. This is done outside of derivations. And it's kind of ingested in, in Nix. And this is like how we're like fetching things from the internet so that then Nix can do its job, right? Um, and there's this idea of like, okay, we're gonna make an R hash so we can use substitutors, and we have this Nix store pad and so on. Um, so we are thinking to implement this GitHub side, which is like a pure uh, a light, a re Git re-implementation in Rust. Um, expose the caching layer as a trait. Um, you need to do caching because every time you fetch this, you want to check. If you don't specify revision there, you want to check is there a new version, is there a new revision for, let's say, Nix packages, right? Um, so we need to. Substitutors. Sorry? Okay. Um, um, and yeah, like there's a lot of other stuff like um, there's like GitHub API calls that I, I, I don't think there needs to be there. So like all of this throttling that's happening right now by the heat hub, we just don't need that. And we can like uh, do things without hitting those uh, uh, rate limits. Um, so that's something that we're going to work on. Um, the next bit is like Nix debugger. Um, we're not shipping Twix evaluator without the debugger. Um, and right now, if you pass Nix debugger to DevEnv, uh, that invokes the Nix debugger. But there is no debugger in Twix. Um, so what 
why is this important? Like Nix is dynamically typed language, and if you get an error, you know, set is value is a set while a function was expected. Like this depends on the value of what error was happening, and and usually from the code, it's not always trivial to know what this value was. So we need to be able to go into the debugger and inspect that. Um, this is something that I have interest in funding. I don't know how to build it myself because it, it spans different components of tweaks. So if somebody's interested into doing this, please let me know. Um, this is a really important part and, and the biggest unknown right now, how do we get this done? Um, and at the same time, it's something that we really need in, in tweaks evaluator before we can start using it in dev. Um, then the important part is like, okay, Twix is re-implementation of Nix. Is it stable? Does it work correctly? Um, there's been a, a ton of work in this direction, um, but I would really like to have regression tests that evaluate the whole Nix packages over time, go back over years, make a nice report, and then we can see, okay, is there any problem still that we need to fix to make sure that evaluation is exactly the same? And this is really important for correctness. Um, and then if it's not the same, we need like to build a bunch of debugging tooling to be able to fix these things in a fast way, to be able to, to understand, okay, why is it not exactly the same and where those differences come from. Um, so um, this is like crucial because we want to we don't we want to have confidence into the evaluator when we integrate it. Um, and then the last bit is the Nix daemon. So once we evaluate, we need to schedule builds. And um, there is like a, already been work done by, I think, uh, Edifits and, and, and others. Um, so we have like a, a handshake between the, the Nix daemon from Twix. Um, but we need to implement more parts so that we'll be able to say, okay, like Nix daemon, please schedule the builds for us. Um, that way we can like have Evaluator component re-implemented, but still keeping the, the, the needs to do the builds for us. Um, the other option is to use the FFI, and I would really like to avoid that. So if somebody wants to, to collaborate on this, um, that would be great. Um, but it's, it's reverse engineering the Nix demo protocol, which is not spec'd out. So um, it's, it's, quite, it's quite interesting work. <laughs> Let's put it like this. Um, how am I doing on time? So, but the least of all, it's it's really fun. Um, um, Re-implementing Nix, I think, is fun. I I, I envy when I see Flockly being excited <laughs> uh, when something new works, and it really gives me that like vibe that was there in Nix like five, ten years ago when we were figuring out things from the scratch. Um, and I feel like that that is kind of like being reincarnated in a new form through that. Um, and it's really cool to see that energy and and to, for the dream come true, what Nix could have been and what Nix could be, um, and open up those gates. Um, I, I personally think that, like, I don't know, I like to compare it a bit like Docker and containers. Docker was, was like, came, and it was this big thing, like it was this big thing that you had to use. And then container industry, like, tore, tore Docker apart into different layers and components and, and made, like, Docker as a think that everyone can use containers now, and there's different runtimes, and there's different formats, and all that stuff. Um, and, and that's really important that then innovation starts to, to happen in different areas. Um, so I really see that this is like the moment in Nix when we get to do this. Um, so it's, I think this is really, I, I tried to make this meme about tweaks, but I couldn't find a way to do it, so I, it's just beers. Sorry about that. Um, all right. So the last part of my talk is like we've been organizing sprints, and I think Nate is going to talk more about what sprints are and what exactly um, at the lightning talks. Um, what do we have? So Lazarus, besides organ co conferences and speed dating, he can he also does cooking. I'm just kidding. Uh, we were at the Tiger Sprint this year. Uh, that was the first sprint in Thailand, Chiang Mai, um, where we gather for a week and everybody can work on whatever. Um, there's going to be tweaks, people, so if you're inter interested in, in hacking on some of the stuff, um, there's going to be announcements, hopefully soon, that you can sign up for the sprint. Um, and we have been hosting in Lanzarote on Canary Islands, where I live, Ocean Sprint. I think we have the fifth edition happening in March, um, and you're also invited to come and um, 
yeah, to hack on whatever you want um, about Nix. And that's it. Um, there is like the DevEnv projects and the Tweaks project um, if you want to know more and if you like to explore this. And um, I'm really excited about like what this is going to enable us. And, and I hope that um, once we do this work, uh, we'll be able to to be confident to, we can iterate faster on DevEnv. And well, give it a try. Dive into Nix. It's nice. It's really nice Rust code, well documented. I, I enjoyed it, and I was immediately sold when I saw how it works. And that's it. I hope um, I hope you enjoyed the talk, and, and thank you for listening. Hi. Uh, thanks for your talk. I think um, it's really exciting, and Twix will probably enable many new, new use cases. Um, for Devon in particular, I'm curious about the onboarding experience that you're aim for, for in the medium term when you have Twix um, embedded or used in Devon. Um, you had a slide about the daemon and integration with the daemon protocol. Does that mean you plan to use the C++ Nix daemon um, still, and um, what does that mean for users that um, that you want to try out Devon for the first time? Maybe they're new to Nix. Um, do they then still have to uh, Im install traditional Nix and Twix and Devon, or what's the plan there? Yeah, so like because we're doing a rewrite, it's we want to do it face by face. So when we integrate the evaluator, you're going to have to install Nix um, and for the Nix daemon to run. Um, and long term, of course, we hope that the Tweaks uh, building part is going to stabilize as well and we can stop using the daemon. Um, but what, until we get there, we have to do this in this way. Um, and yeah, so for now, you have to install Nix in order to use DevEnv. That's the short. <laughs> The short way of putting it, yeah. Right, thanks. Have you tried Nix Remote Crate, crate that implements Nix Demon Protocol? Um, no. Does it work? Kind of. The example in the repo is a proxy that uh, dumps all the interactions on the STR. So you can kind of use it. So it implements the client daemon protocol and then talks to? Client and server side, well, all this structures and stuff on okay. there. Yeah, that's great. Thanks, I'll take a look at that. There you go, one problem solved. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is me not really understanding how these things fit together. But what I remember from Florian's talk is that with Twix, they want to like not have derivation files, right? They want to do the build as they evaluate. And yeah. how does that rub against wanting to use the evaluator with with Nix, does that have like competing goals? Like, does that mean that Twix needs to be do more than they originally envi envisioned? Like, are there changes to be made there, or? Uh, um, that's a good question. So, like, because these are components, right? Like, I, I, at this phase, I only care about okay, give me the evaluation, and then let's create derivations and 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 talk whatever Nix daemon is doing. Um, Folkly, Folkly might explain this, but like I, I think Tweak's main benefit actually comes from the build part. Like there is a lot of really nice stuff you can do there with stores and all that stuff. Um, so they want to eliminate, yes, the derivations and have this thing be more like a stream-like interface rather than like write to the Nix store and generate derivation and blah, blah, blah. Um, but that is then part of the implementation, how the building works in, in Tweak itself. Um, and yeah, you're not... Like technically, you can you could implement an interface that both can work, but that's still up. I, as far as I understand, Flockly and Flockly can can say more. That is still something that we need to decide whether we want to support both options or just one. Um, yeah, but I, I'm, I'm sure Flockly knows better um, about this part of the tweaks. So we um, we do have the derivation, or like at least enough information to realize the derivations as we go through the build. 
they are not written to the to the Twix store or to any file system or something. But we we need to maintain this information as we go through the evaluator. So it's right now it's accessible in the in one I/O implementation, one of these I/O uh, eval I/O implementations, and you can kind of get it out of there and then write the derivation files to some SQLite database or whatever to uh, to then feed them to Nix somehow. So that should be possible to to access from there. Yeah. I think one of the main goals that is very exciting for DevEnf is that you can have um, import from derivation um, as a first class citizen. Um, and, and well, there's a, a couple of things you need to get in order to make that a first class citizen feature. Um, but that's really exciting for, for DevEnf because, like, I started DevEnf as a goal that you can have. You can say, like, oh, I have a Rust package, Rust software here, just package it in Nix, right? Um, but we need to get a lot of things in order before we can get to that point. Um, and, and IFD and what Twix is doing is actually like the way there. Um, main blocker being the parallel evaluation. Um, so a lot of evaluator work that needs to be figured out. So um, Domen, you, you're of course the creator of um, Dev and, and uh, Kashix. So of course you're, you're always thinking about this you know total picture of using Nix. Uh, so one of the cool things about to fix from my perspective is that, like in the talk I saw yesterday, um, there's all kinds of fun new hooks for having uh, Nix or this Nix shaped thing talk to other services and talk to whatever. I'm curious if you have any um, sort of big picture thoughts about where DevEnv could go and what kind of sort of platform interactions it could have, uh, either with Kashix or with some new sort of platform or something like that. That's a great question. I mean. When I, when I was designing this, I was thinking for like maximum extensibility. I don't know if that's a word. Um, so like DevEnf is going to have like cargo style plugins probably one day where you'll be able to like, you know, insert your, I don't know, DevEnf foobar command. Um, and in the end, you're going to have the Rust API to be able to like, you know, evaluate something, do whatever you want. Um, and that way anyone can write, like, you could write even like, I don't know, JSON interface and you would like fetch the developer environment in JSON and then convert it to Nix and then do the rest, right? So like, that's, that's the long-term goal. Um, but before we get there, we need to figure out a lot of the, the other stuff. Um, and then hopefully that enables everyone to integrate that into whatever they want. Um, I don't know if that answers the question exactly. Maybe. For sure, thanks. <laughs> okay, I guess we're good. All right. All right, let's thank the speaker again. Thank you.